Hello and welcome to second part of PeopleSoft integration series. In this video, I will show you how to prepare PeopleSoft environment for third party integration. Like you are watching in the top left hand corner, in the previous video, I showed you how to play YouTube video inside PeopleSoft application with the help of hard coded HTML. My ultimate goal is to change that video dynamically using people code with the help of YouTube API. I'll start with an example. Mike is a CIO of a software company. In the light of coronavirus pandemic, he called Apple and placed an order for 100 MacBook Pros so that his team members can work from home. Someone from Apple warehouse picked up the order, packaged it and sent across it to Mike. Here is the courier guy with a package of 100 MacBook Pros. Before the courier guy could step inside office premises, he is being monitored by the security office located right beside the gate. So once everything checked out, the person who is responsible to collect the package came outside the building and collected the package. And he scanned the contents and make sure everything is all right. And he delivered the package to the front office. The front office checked the register and who is expecting the package. And they found that the office manager for Mike's company is expecting the package. So they hand over the package to the floor manager of Mike's office. The floor manager collected the package and delivered the package to Mike. I'm sorry about the long story, but I want to use this story to explain PeopleSoft integration concepts. Going back, this is how physical communication happens between two different parties. Electronic communication is no different. If at least one of the services, maybe inside Mike's office or outside Mike's office, did not do their job, Mike would not have received the package on time. Now, I will tell you what are the services that needs to be up and running inside PeopleSoft application in order for it to communicate electronically with other third-party softwares. By the way, my name is Siva Koya. I began my career in PeopleSoft and I am still living on it. Let's begin with integration broker. I am sure you are aware that integration broker is the piece that allows PeopleSoft to communicate with third-party softwares. Integration broker is made up of two components. One is integration gateway, which is housed on web server, and the other is integration engine that resides on app server. We will go through it one by one. Let's talk about integration gateway. If you imagine for a second, Mike's software company as a PeopleSoft environment you can compare integration gateway with the security office which we saw before. As you saw before, security office does many jobs. One of the jobs is to monitor incoming packages and outgoing packages, validating the contents of the package, validating the ID who is bringing the package to make sure he's the right guy. And all the similar things are done by integration gateway in PeopleSoft. First of all, let's make sure if integration gateway is up and running in our PeopleSoft environment. Let me log in into PeopleSoft application to make sure gateway service is active. By the way, I'm doing this uh, integration in my single user environment. So you, any of you can try on your environments. Now navigate to people tools, integration broker, configuration, gateways. Just like Mike is concerned if his security office is up and running or not, we are concerned if our local gateway is active. Perfect. Which means none of the security team members in my previous example are sleeping. By the way, these are the different modes of communication our PeopleSoft gateway supports. So PeopleSoft to PeopleSoft, it uses PSFT targets. If there are any file transfers, it uses SFTP and we are more concerned about HTTP target because the integration we are going to do, the REST based web service, it is going to use HTTP target. Let's move on to next service that needs to be up and running in PeopleSoft for third party integration. Just a while back, I compared security office with PeopleSoft integration gateway. Just like in security office, each guy has a different role. One guy will be collecting the packages, the other guy will be doing video monitoring, the other guy will be inspecting the packages. Just like our security guy who is waiting to receive the incoming packages, 
there is one service which is responsible to receive the rest based messages now let's go ahead and configure rest listening connector to configure rest listening connector navigate to people tools integration broker configuration service configuration click on setup target locations and make sure you configure the target location. The instructions are clearly shown here. You need to give your uh, web server machine name, port. This should be populated as is on your default local node. That's it. Now let's move on to the next service that should be up and running for PeopleSoft integration to happen. If you remember this guy, you might call him floor manager or building manager. He is primarily responsible for delivering package inside this building. We call him as node in PeopleSoft. Node is nothing but an integration partner. So likewise, there will be some integration partner from the Apple side and there will be some integration partner in the second floor. In our example, the integration partner from the Google side is called external node. The guy in the second floor is called internal node. If I may say they are point of contacts for any integration. Now let's go ahead and check if local node is active. Navigate to people tools integration setup nodes and search for default local node go to connectors tab make sure local node pings to success this confirms that local node is ready to send or receive messages let's move to the fourth step which is very important you need to make sure you are able to access internet from your single user environment this step literally costs me a couple of days to figure out why my PeopleSoft integration is not working. So this is very important step. By default, when you install your single user environment, your single user environment will not have access to internet. If you want to check if your single user environment have access to internet, just open the command prompt from your Oracle virtual box and just ping Google. As you can see here, you can see the IP address of the Google server. If you do not have access to internet, it will say host not found. By the way, if you have done default installation of single user environment using VirtualBox host only Ethernet adapter, you don't have access to internet. If you want to provide internet access for your single user environment, what you need to do is you need to power off your virtual machine you need to change your network from host only network to bridged adapter and select your Wi-Fi connection here in the name. Just a quick warning here. I tried in one of one of my other environment for some reason it did not work out and I lost that environment. So just be careful. Do it at your own risk. That's it for today guys. To summarize, these are the four services that needs to be up and running to do any PeopleSoft integration. First one is gateway service. Gateway service should be active and you need to configure REST listening connector. You should be able to successfully ping local node. And lastly, internet connection is required to do any kind of third party integration. Bear with me guys, there are just a couple more things before we start doing the cool stuff like creating service, service operation, etc. I'll come back with those steps in the next video. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel. See you soon in the next video.